Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today's fishing reel that I'll be working on is a Quantum Optics 20. That optics line's been around a while now, probably about 8 or 10 years. They're nicely made reels, and uh, these reels uh, are what I will call value-priced reels. They're not uh, cheap, they're well made for the price paid, and uh, Quantum recently uh, merged uh, it was owned by Quantum Zebco, and then it uh, became part of Rather Products. Rather Products is the parent company to um, Lose Reels, and uh, they're positioning Lose as the top end, and Quantum as the uh, the medium brand, and Zebco as the budget brand, if you will. So we'll we'll see how they continue to uh, progress with that uh, merger. And, Today we're going to work on the Optics 20. If you like to see fishing reels repaired, if you like to learn a little bit about the reels themselves, learn a bit about the history, see how they're made, and learn how to fix the reel yourself, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting, and you can make a determination as to whether that's a video you would like to see. Well, I start by removing the exterior pieces. We have a spool here. There's a little bit of corrosion on that spool or salt buildup or something. I'm just going to put a little penetrating oil there, see if that can't free up the, the stuff. The uh, optics reels, four ball bearings. We'll see where they are in a moment. It uh, has the advantage of having an anti-reverse override on it so that you can back backpedal the reel. And uh, these came as a group of reels that uh, a fella sent in, said they were owned by his dad. And uh, some of them have sat idle. Most of them have not been serviced. And he asked me to, to, to clean them up, service them, and make them ready to go fishing again. So that's what we will do. I'm going to remove the handle now. There was a little uh, seal washer there. Pull the handle out from the other side. And when I take the pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container. Uh, I recommend that you have a system of organization in terms of how you're going to approach the disassembly and assembly of the reel and what you're going to do with the parts when you take them off. If you don't, it can become uh, well a little bit of a nightmare from time to time because uh, you can lose these small parts easily. I encourage you to take pictures at uh, various stages of the disassembly so that you know the orientation of the pieces and the parts, how they come apart, and more importantly, when it's time to go to uh, reassemble, how they go back together again. It should be a 12 millimeter. I'm going to use a, a socket here. This will come off in a traditional counterclockwise manner. We'll remove the rotor now. That'll give us a picture of what's going on underneath. And underneath we have a uh, traditional um, dog. You'll see how the anti-reverse dog ratchets in and out. We'll override that. It'll come out and it'll allow this cog to spin back and forth. This is kind of an interesting piece in that the, uh, the rotor is set up for a dog to, to intersect there, but the internals are different. That usually means that there were some spare parts left over. I'm also curious, it's got a, a silver or bronze coloring there, and it's got the blue coloring below. It's, so this may just be a uh, replacement rotor, I'm not sure. If your bale is working fine, and I've tested this one, it's working fine, all I recommend that you do is put some penetrating oil in the seams on that uh, bearing, work it in and out a couple of times, make sure that it trips back nicely, and if it does, there's no need to remove the bale assembly unless you're uh, stuck. If it's not tripping smoothly, then of course you want to do something to um, remediate that issue, and that means taking the bale apart and inspecting, cleaning out, and so on. All right, this is the trip. Uh, this is the anti-reverse dog assembly here that'll pull up. Underneath that, you have a burring shield, so plastic or Teflon washer. And you have the collar that goes inside that. This is an anti-reverse clutch. So uh, and that's a nice little piece to know there. 
So we've got two things. We've got the clutch that's working and we also have the fail safe on that. There's two bearings underneath here, or one bearing underneath here that's going to help us remove the pinion gear. But before I do that, I want to go to the case and remove that. Now I'm looking at that bump guard below. I do not see a screw holding that bump guard in. So my general assumption when I don't see that is that this screw here is going to probably go through a tag in that plastic uh, bump guard here, the silver piece. If you are unsure of what the pieces are, do not try to pry something out. Always take a moment to uh, assess the situation and if you need to, go onto the internet, see if you can locate a schematic for this reel and that will help you to uh, see it in a burst diagram and that should help you to uh, understand a little bit more about what you're up to before you uh, go too far. Let's see what's going to go on here now. I'm thinking that this should come out. Maybe not. It's possible that that's just part of the other case. So let's loosen up this side case if we can. There you go. So that bump guard doesn't move at all. It's part of the, the back case here. All right, that's easy enough. We have our main gear. We have a bearing in the side plate here. I'm going to test that bearing. It seems to be running fine. I just tested it with a finger. You can test it with your fingers. You can test it with um, a little screwdriver. We insert it in the center. Or you can use uh, a regular bearing tester, which is kind of a cone-shaped object. At any rate, make sure that they're turning. Now, when I tested this, those bearings were working fine. So those are two of the bearings, one in the side case in the back and one on the other side. People ask me how many bearings a reel should have, particularly when you see some reels advertised with 10, 11, 12 ball bearings. My standard answer is you should have three at a minimum if they're in the right place. I've seen three ball bearing reels in the wrong places. But if they're in the right place, it would be a bearing on each side of the main gear and a bearing on the pinion gear. And we have that here. And without looking at the schematic, my guess would be that the other bearing belongs to the uh, roller on the line guide. All right, we can do two things here. We'll remove the axle shaft. And when I service the reel, I like to take the reel completely apart. I like to inspect each part, make sure that there's no damage to them and to make sure that they're all cleaned before I reassemble. There's no sense dealing with the reel without doing the full inspection. It doesn't take that much longer and you can rest comfortably that it's right. Check your axle shaft, make sure that it's nice and smooth. That goes into the parts tray. There's a crosswind block next and there's a crosswind gear and that's the bottom end of the case here. Just lay them down to clean up. And then we want to come up top here. We're going to remove the pinion gear as the last piece that I will remove. I'm not going to remove that swing arm for the, uh, the anti-reverse. And usually I can get this screw out on the back side without doing that. So there you go. Okay, we should be able to pull up and out now. And that is your pinion gear and your third bearing. And I'm going to test that bearing. It just needs a little oil. It's working fine. And I want to clean our pinion gear. Get all the old greases out of those channels in it. Inspect the grooves and the ridges of the pinion gear. Make sure that they're nice and uniform. That they're not uh, chipped, broken, cracked, or otherwise. And uh, then we can re -lube. I recommend that you only use fishing reel grease. I'm using pen precision reel grease for this. And while I grease this pinion gear, I'm going to encourage you to ask questions. If you have a question about this reel or any reel, just leave it in the comments section of this uh, video. And I do try to answer those in the morning. So uh, maybe you want to know a little bit more about the reel, the price points, what other versions of this reel are available and sizes, things like that. 
Maybe you're working on one and you're stuck. Maybe you can't quite figure out how to get it back together again. Maybe you're watching this video first time to the channel and you didn't realize maybe you should have taken the pictures and you're a little bit confused. Just leave those questions in the comment section. I do try to answer almost all of them over the course of the day. All right, well, we're pretty much done cleaning up that case. I'm just going to put a little bit more penetrating oil in there. I use the penetrating oil as a uh, degreaser. I don't use it as a general lubri lubricant. All right, all good, nice and clean. And we can start to reinstall then. We'll start with the pieces we took out last. That's your pinion gear and your bearing. There's a little a hole that the pinion gear seats in underneath. And when you put your bearing back in, make certain that you're flush to the case. If it's riding high, you haven't put something in correctly, you need to go back and reset it. There's the two screws that hold this in place. And the other one usually gets to be a little bit more fun because it's got that arm hanging there. But fortunately, whoever engineered this reel left us just enough space to go ahead and do that. We're going to clean the crosswind gear just like we did the pinion gear. I check all the teeth and the grooves, make sure they're free of all greases and oils. Make sure that the points are all tight and uniform and make sure the grooves are clean. Once you do that, the crosswind gear is a workhorse. It gets grease everywhere. It gets grease on the back, on the teeth. Those teeth will be driven by the small gear on the back of the main gear. And the face where your crosswind block is going to ride. When you grease that up, insert that over the stud in the case. And make sure that the stud on your crosswind block is low. We'll do the same thing here. We'll clean the old greases off the cross my block now. Make sure that the channel where that stud is going to ride is nice and clean. And then go ahead and get your grease. And all you have to do on this one is grease the back. The other sides don't come in contact with anything. You're putting grease on there, you just, well, wasting some grease. Okay, next up then we can install our axle shaft. Just a light coat of grease on that axle shaft because when it goes through the hole in your pinion gear, it's probably going to wipe off most of the, the grease that you put on if you put on a lot of surplus. Align the hole in that axle shaft with the hole in your crosswind block and you can go into your parts tray or however you organize your pieces and parts. Get the flathead screw which will hold that in place. Well, I may be premature in this one. We're going to see. I'm not sure if this main gear needed to be installed before the axle shaft. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. We're going to find out in a moment. And sometimes there's not enough clearance on the back end of this. So we've cleaned this. We've checked all the teeth on this. A bit of grease on both sides here. And let's see if it can go in behind. If it can't, we'll simply pull out the axle shaft. It can. I will not answer that. Sometimes you're just plain lucky and that's what that is there. Alright, I'm going to take the other side plate then with the bearing that's been oiled. We'll reinstall that. Make sure you have a nice snap to that and that the grooves on your case on all sides are tucked tight and that there's no binding going on. If you've got binding, then you didn't set something up properly. Your reel will not perform, so don't waste your time putting down uh, the screws and hoping to pull it in that way. It's just not going to work. We have three side plate screws. They're all the same size. You should note when you take the screws out of fishing reels, whether they're uniform or different. If they're different, you should note where the where the short one or the long one or the different ones go. That doesn't matter on this particular reel, but some reels like a Shimano, now they may have three or four different screws in the side plate. 
you're going to want to notice where each goes because it'll be very difficult to reassemble if you put the wrong screws in the wrong holes. Alright, this is the bottom end of the reel now. Next up, then, we want to put our, there's a little washer that goes over the top. That's a bearing shield. Make sure that sits down there. And we have the anti-reverse bearing and collar. Now, there's only one way to put this on. Well, I guess somebody could try to put it on upside down, but that's the way it goes with the ridges up top. If you were unsure of that, check your pictures. And you do not oil this one. Anti-reverse clutches are friction-driven devices. They are intended to be uh, run dry. Okay. Just want to do a little bit more cleanup while I have this rotor off. So this reel was running tight. And we saw a lot of dried grease or missing greases and the like when we were... Uh, Doing this before. So this should fix that situation. Alright, we put the rotor on. Let's get the rotor nut. We noticed when we did this that the rotor nut came off in a counterclockwise or traditional manner. It goes on in a clockwise manner. Or as they say, righty tighty. I'm using a deep socket here on this one. You can use a 12 millimeter nut. And uh, that'll be perfectly fine. Give it a spin. Seems to be spinning fine. Next step then is the collar that goes on. And you need to align the collar with the two screws in the rotor. Just like that. Going to your parts tray, there should be two more screws in there for that. If you've organized yourself the right way, you'll know where to look for them. Let's go ahead and assemble those. And we'll put the handle on and we'll show you how to service the drag washers in this reel. And the service will basically be complete. Alright, that's the tie down for the rotor nut to keep that from moving. I noticed when I took this reel apart that this reel was set up as a right hand crank, so I'm going to set it up that way again. If you want to set it up for a left hand crank, all you have to do is reverse what we're doing here. So insert the handle shaft through the main gear, get your tie down cap, nut screw, and that's the way that one goes on. Let's take a look. Oop, before we do that, we got one more piece here. There's a click ratchet and a shim washer for the spool. You can put that on at this point. There's a, a click washer makes a little noise. And I'm going to just use some steel wool, see if we can't get the corrosion off. Kind of buff it as best we can. There's a little bit on there that uh, we did our best. We eliminated the salt, but the salt has eaten into the spool. And there's just a little bit of roughness there. Okay, we're going to grab our pick and we're going to pull this five-sided spring out of the top of the spool. That's a retention clip for your drag washers. Underneath your drag washers, I'm guessing we're going to have felt washers in here. That seems to be what, uh, what Quantum used. That is what Quantum used here. And I think with this size reel, there's only one, and it's very, very dry. You want to make sure that you have a flexibility left in it. You do. There's a lot of dirt and debris on the cavity here, so you want to clean that out. So one drag washer as opposed to two or three is going to give you less max drag than the one with more. Max drag is a function of surface area, and uh, the materials don't matter as much. You can, you, you can use felt washers. Shimano uses felt washers and high-end reels. So it's not a matter of the washer itself. It's a matter of how many of them are going to give you that uh, drive. In this case, we only have the one, but that's okay. A 20-size reel 
uh, is probably what I'll call that pond or stream or lake reel. You don't need a lot. I've taken the fishing reel oil and I've saturated that felt washer. The idea on that is that it keeps it flexible and not dried out as you saw there. Well that one will be easily restored with that oil. You don't have to worry about it and that should give you the drag that was intended for this reel. Once you do that and you put the retention clip back in, go ahead and put the spool on and then tighten the button down and make sure that your drag is holding. There you go. Once it is, back that drag off, the adjuster off. You don't want to press all those oils out of the, um, the drag washer. It just took a long time to uh, try to restore. There's a little bit of oil goes onto the seam. There's a little oil port in the handle. And this one's done. So again, a little bit of a curiosity. I'm not sure if this came blue in, in silver or if this has been replaced. Not certain. Doesn't matter. It works. Let's give it a try. Nice and smooth. That's what I mean by a value price reel. It's got the basics. It's in... Uh, it's got nice materials inside. Four ball bearings. Plenty. They're all in the right place. This reel's ready to go fishing. Again, give it a second chance. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you did, please like it. Again, if you like this type of a series, please subscribe. Thank you to all of the folks that have. I really do appreciate your signing up for them. And uh, to our first responders, thank you for everything it is that you do. It is appreciated every time you try to keep us safe. To everyone, I wish you good fishing, whether it's in a pond, lake, ocean, or uh, deep sea. I wish you good fishing and enjoy the art of reel repair. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.